Okay, so we're getting ready to build the miniature coffins and uh, I think I'm going to put up on screen uh, the pseudo blueprints that you can kind of use. I built these before and uh, getting the angles right was difficult. So I finally sat down, figured out the math of it and uh, these tend to fit together a little bit better. I found a uh, pattern for a coffin, the Dracula-type coffin, uh, on the internet, and I built it using its dimensions. To me, I think it's too short here and too squatty. So I've the blueprint that I'm going to give you, I think, makes a better overall shape than this does, but that was the one I found online. Um, first thing I like to do is cut out my top and bottom. Um, uh, first angle on both sides, 15 degrees, and then uh, a lot of times I like to match the, the bottom just a little bit shorter than the top. Do your 15 degrees, and you can kind of eyeball it then to get your good coffin shape. So I do two exactly alike, one for the top and one for the bottom. Uh, the other thing with the, the blueprint I've given you is if you double it, you can make one that's twice as big. Like over here, I'm cutting one that's, uh, I'll put the top together real quick. So you see, this one makes for a coffin that's about 36 inches long, whereas the one we're making is about you know, a little bit more than a foot. I'm trying to, with this one, to use uh, standard wood that you can find so you don't have to spend a lot of time milling it. I'm going to try to do everything with just the table saw. Um, I will say I did use a skill saw to cut these out. A table saw would help, but down in the basement all I have is my chop saw. So The other thing is I've gotten a lot of uh, quarter round. We'll use this as decorative stuff on it. and. You know, we'll get the basic ba uh, the basic shape of the of the coffin done, and then we'll just elaborate with uh, with trim work. And it's pine, so I think I'll paint it. Um, I have made these in oak before, and then uh, it's cool on the top. You can wood burn your name in, or or whoever's name you want to put in it. Okay, so first thing is we have our top and bottom, and I like to go ahead and write on them which is which. Because I've cut these first, what I'm going to do is cut my pieces so that they match and fit directly onto this. So we know that the top piece, of course we're going to need a ruler, the top width before the angle starts is looks like four and an eight and then our angle will flare out. Now on the top, that angle is 37 degrees on each side. So I'll just get a regular uh, one by four, and that's what I'll cut that out of. So four and a fourth with a 37 degree bevel. And to go quickly, sometimes instead of measuring, you can also just set it on your piece and see exactly where it lines up at. Draw your line, and what I usually like to do too is draw the, the direction of the bevel so that you don't cut backwards and ruin your piece of wood. Okay, the next piece will be our side pieces, and uh, for their angles we have 37 degrees at the top down to 14 degrees at this point. So we already have our one by two that's cut at 37. I'll bring that over, measure out for the next cut, which will be the 14. Now here's where a, a straight edge comes in handy because I don't know how this is going to turn when it's over at the saw. So if I can give myself a straight line, then I'm going to be able to see where everything's at. Okay, and again, on the wood, I like to cut the angle, the direction the angle's going to go, so that I know what direction I'm going in. And again, this is going to be, we've got the 37 on this end. As long as the saw is set up, I'm going to go ahead and chop the 37 over here, but then I'll do the 45, or the 14. We'll 
but we're just dry fitting our pieces together to see if they're going to line up. And like I say, sometimes I find this to be quicker just to put it on and, and go. Uh, if you get one a little too long, you can always just barely take a piece off to uh, do it the other way. So we will put our next 37 on this side and mark where it needs to go. Use our straight edge so we know exactly where the line is, or the cut should be. And again, we'll mark the direction of the cut. We're going to start with an angle at the top on both sides of 10 degrees, and then the angle at the bottom is 41 degrees. So first we'll cut our 10 degrees. And we know that this one is going to be cut out to 41 degrees. This piece is no good. So what we could try to do is take this piece up to here and measure. with a okay and let's see we need another is that a 10 degree cut yeah 10 degrees and then we're going back to our 41 and then we'll finish off the bottom piece is uh, 41 degrees which we have on this one already so we ought to be able to just measure the bottom. Okay, and then we'll dry fit everything together. And we've got the basic shape there for the coffin. Now, the lid to set on it now would fall inside. Um, we can either make a bigger lid to cover it or we can whittle this down just a little bit so that it fits in so that it opens like a box top. So the next thing we'll do is glue the bottom part and the sides on so they're permanent. Okay, so still using the chop saw and not having to use the table saw, I took three boards. Uh, I think you might be able to see the line there of where they are. Uh, laid them on the top of my coffin, drew out the pattern, chopped them, and glued them together. Now what we're going to do is route an edge on the first piece of our So that will be the first piece of the lid. And then we've got the piece, the original piece that I cut should be able to fit here on top. And a quick, quick easy way to do it is just router the same thing on this, glue it on and you've got your lid. Um, to our top piece, glue it down. Once the glue holds, then we'll run the router and give it the same decorative edge as our uh, top lid piece. Okay, next thing we'll do while the lid's drying is we'll hit uh, our sides with the random orbit sander smooth them down a little bit before we uh, put the trim on. Okay, I think I'm going to save the quarter round for uh, when I build a bigger coffin. This one is small enough that I think what I'm going to do with it is use a half inch um, half round. So what I'm doing with the quarter round right now is just going around both the top and bottom, marking a straight line Uh, from where the bottom, or from, because we know that's three fourths of an inch, it's just faster than using a ruler. I'll mark it all the way around the top, flip it over, so I've got a line now of where I'll hook my quarter round onto to give it a paneled look. Um, the tool I found for this, this was perfect for this. The, the chop saw ends up breaking these tiny little miter box that you get at Menards, and I think it was $6. So I can cut out uh, 45s on all my little raised panels that I will cut and then glue on. Uh, 
the one nice thing with we know that we've got a, we've got a six-sided coffin. So to do these raised panels on each side, two times six, we're going to need twelve that are all the same uh, height, which I think on this particular one is about oh about two and three fourths inches. So we could go ahead and cut all 12 of those because the only one that will change will be the length on the, the different size. But all of the up and down ones will be the same. And I'm gluing them on a separate piece of paper, squaring them up, and then when the glue takes hold then I can kind of eyeball to center this onto the coffin panel. I also am doing this on graph paper so that I can kind of use it to square up the panel. And then once the glue dries, I can just peel the paper off. Okay, so what I do is I laid it on the paper and glued it. Now I'll be able to glue it onto the coffin and I can move it and get it centered the way I want. Okay, I've tried different designs for uh, crosses on them. On the other one you see I did what I call the Dracula's cross. And on this one I'm just going to do a standard cross. Three pieces of wood. Center it make the cross, we'll glue it down, and then uh, when we paint, it'll just paint all over the whole thing. So pretty classic uh, Dracula's coffin.